through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 198. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, we're going to give you our DVD rundown mm -hmm. for the week of October 23rd. Woo! Woo! Almost Halloween. Yeah, no, kind of, kind of a modest week, but yeah. I think there's at least one or two nice little gems that yeah. you can polish. There, Definitely, yeah. Bring it out. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Let's we'll start one of the uh, headliners, if you will, of the take summer. Take shirt off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Magic Mike, the Channing Tatum, Steven Soderbergh film. Sadly, where Spencer and I should have breakaway pants, but we don't. Yeah, yeah strangely, I don't have any. I don't know really? how that happened. I'll let you borrow my extra yeah, pair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is obviously the stripper movie. Yes. Uh, inspired by Channing Tatum's real life. Yes. It was a huge hit theatrically. <laughs> Heidi uh, on the MacGuffin site gave it a B plus for those who are wondering. Very nice. In terms of the DVD release itself, it's kind of meh. I mean, it's got the Blu-ray, the DVD, the ultraviolet um, combo pack. Always but nice. They like in terms of special features, it's deleted dance scenes slash extended ones, which you know I'm sure people who watch the movie are going to be looking the forward ladies. to. Ladies, yeah, the ladies. The ladies. Uh, there's backstage on Magic Mike with Channing Tatum exposing the finer details of being a male stripper mm. and the transformation mm -hmm. of his co-stars. So uh, a lot of pelvic thrust action, hopefully. Presumably. Oh, that's probably in the moves of Magic Mike, oh, ho, ho. which is like the dance party mode, I believe. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know that I'm sure that's the one that you know I don't know who's going to be training on those moves i mean maybe there's some dudes out there that are like i want to learn that. the next generation of napoleon dynamite have uh, just magic mike special features or joseph gordon levitt he did some uh some, that's true some more yeah, moves SNL. On, yeah. Well, so. I, I mean you know if you're a fan of the movie that's cool mm -hmm. like i'm sure this stuff will please you yeah. i don't i don't think it's enough to draw me in i was sort mm. of modest in my interest in the film to begin with but you know maybe i'll sit down and rent it from scarecrow one of these mm -hmm. days who knows mm -hmm. i'll yeah. probably wait till it's on netflix instant and put it on to entertain my wife and by that i mean she'll probably fall asleep and i'll end up watching the whole thing and really liking it for some specific or weird reason who knows all right next up we have another release from mm -hmm. the summer abraham lincoln vampire hunter um i think pretty much the title tells you everything you need to know about the story yeah abraham yeah. lincoln Vampire hunting, boom, yep. together in one package. Uh, much like that, there's there's several different editions coming out, but the, there's one comprehensive edition with a Blu-ray 3D, Blu-ray, DVD, and digital copy hmm. all in one. 3D. I'm not entirely sure. I'm a little bit perplexed. According to Amazon, it only has one disc in this. I don't see how that's even remotely possible if you have Blu-ray and DVD yeah. in one. But Presumably Maybe it's one double-sided disc that literally has only those features and nothing else. I don't else. know, but I don't know if you can make a Blu-ray and DVD in one. That's actually a good point. Yeah. I don't know. So hmm. either way, I presume it's just Amazon's omission. Probably. But nevertheless, I mean, it's got a bunch of special features as well. You know, hmm. audio commentary from the writer Seth Graham Smith. Uh, it's got a making of featurette. It's got uh, vampire hunting fight choreography, uh, which I think uh -huh, is kind of uh -huh, interesting. Uh -huh. And it's got a visual feast. Timur Beka... However you say it, the guy Beka who Mama directed Betal's Wanted. Visual style, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's close enough. As well as like you know some music videos and graphic mm. novel related issues because I didn't, I didn't even know it was a graphic novel. I mean it makes sense. I'm not surprised. It I makes total it, sense. Yeah. That seems like the kind of thing a graphic novel would be about. I have know? I would I would bet it was probably a book first and then a graphic novel soon very after very soon after if it wasn't a graphic novel first i'm just gonna go straight to graphic novel is my guess i just happen to that's know, how i roll i just remember when it was coming out i didn't see much like comparison of a graphic novel so mm. i would I, I would think but i don't really know because i didn't read the book so yeah. not like i needed to because it's pretty simple but you know uh ben gave it a b on i enjoyed it and i think yeah i mean i think for what it is you know if you don't oh, take yeah. it too seriously I mean, if you go into a film called abraham yeah. lincoln vampire and you take it seriously you're missing the point i hate to be a defender of something like that but it's totally true it's so simple that if you really went into it expecting more than the title tells you then you'll be disappointed probably but if you really go in expecting just that with the exception of a few questionable race decisions that they make as not as far as who's playing who but kind of uh implications mm, between races mm -hmm. are a little bit yeah but otherwise it's a fun action film sure yeah very good 
Moving right along, we're going to talk about seeking a friend for the end of the world. Yes, the Steve Carell, right? Steve Carell, Kira Knightley. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, from writer director Lorene Scafaria. Okay. Scafaria, which might not be a household name off the top of your head. Okay. But she was the writer of Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. I see. She. This is her directorial debut. So Interesting. Obviously, it's about the end of the world, and you know, I I saw this film actually. Oh, okay. I did a review of it on the website. Ooh. I, check it out online, MacGuffinPodcast.com. That's right. <laughs> I think, you know, I, I thought the first half of the film was really interesting, where it's sort of dealing with the question of people's reactions to what you would do if you knew the world was going to end. Mm-hmm. Say if you Some knew... Kind of apocalypse. Well, yeah. if you knew a meteor was going to hit the Earth, ah, which yes. is the case in this okay. movie, what you... And you had would 20 days time. late. Yeah, ah, what I would see. you do? Would you continue working, just going through your routine? Would um, you let your kids do whatever they wanted? Would mm-hmm. you... Go like Rape anarchy, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it was sort of that interesting thing to watch these people sort of respond to the scenario. Some of it's funny, some of it's dramatic. Did a good job of like counting down like 20 days left, hmm. 30, 13 days left, stuff like that. And then at a certain point, that just stops and it becomes like a, a road love story with Kira Knightley wah. and Steve Carell, which I was like, this is not really the film I want to see. Yeah, so it's unfortunate. It was okay. I gave it like a C, plus, I believe. Yeah, C, plus, yeah. yeah. It's it's decent. Passing grade. <laughs> it's passing grade. And you know, it's, it's it's got a lot of similar sort of characteristics to Nick and Nora's Infinite okay. Place. You know, music is an important element. You know, it's got a sort of similar quirky sense of humor to mm-hmm. it. So it's it's got some enjoyable elements. I'm curious to see what she does in the future. I'd definitely yeah. be one to check it out. Definitely. In terms of the release, they've got some outtakes, which with Steve Carell has probably got some decent stuff. You He's know? a pretty funny guy. Uh, you have music for the end of the world, what's on your playlist, which I think is a pretty cool yeah. idea. What would you want to listen Specifically to? Specifically considering her previous work. Totally. It's clearly totally. something but she's even, passionate about. Even just like, you know, thinking of our own perspective what yeah. music would you want to listen to if you were gonna you know die and uh oh, it's got it. <laughs> it's got a feature commentary with uh her her mom curiously enough huh. uh one of the producers joy gorman and actors Patton oswald and adam brody interesting are they in the film i assume they i hope they are but you know it's it's what they're not like headline <laughs> okay. people it's not steve <laughs> i don't know why steve carell or kira knightley maybe they're just too busy yeah, and they're like we can get these two guys because they're not working <laughs> Pat Oswald's like i'll do anything yeah seriously so i mean it's 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 a decent addition i wouldn't hmm. necessarily freak out over it but it's got the blu-ray the dvd and the digital copy and the ultraviolet all in one so Coming more popular if you like it it's got everything mm-hmm. and you know got some decent interesting yeah. features so not too bad not too bad Finally, one that you're a little uh, upset about. Let's just say, say skeptical. Let's skeptical just leave about. it at skeptical and, and be less judgmental. Sure. <laughs> I'm a little bit more optimistic, yes. I'll admit that. And that is the 30th anniversary collector's edition of Blade Runner. Yes. This is the D- Blu-ray, DVD, digital co- oh, sorry, ultraviolet digital copy um, package. Mm-hmm. You made a good point when we were going back and forth on email that they seem to repackage Blade Runner yes. all the time. And I, yes. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. You know, that's a very valid point. This edition, though, does a pretty good job of sweeping up all that stuff into one good. package. I mean, Which is good. They've got At least one, it's comprehensive. They've got one disc with the final cut. They have another disc with the theatrical cut, the international theatrical cut, and the director's cut. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's a little obscene. It's a little obscene. I, I guess it's mostly an old argument with me. It's just the fact that Blade Runner is probably one of the most like, but the other cut will make it. Yeah, no, it's true. Movies but it's, out there. It's so. also one of those things I kind of understand that to a certain degree because Ridley Scott yes. didn't have the control at that yes, point definitely. that he does yes, now. Yeah. So, um, third disc has some interesting stuff like a making of documentary. It's got a feature out about Philip K. Dick. It's got a, a feature out about the novel versus the film, which hmm. is, uh, Electric, do you dream? Well, yeah, w- w- do androids dream, dream of electric, electric sheep? sheep yeah, yeah. Uh, it's got some uh, audio interviews with Philip K. Dick. Presumably, Ooh, I don't know how much it will be about the movie. Probably presumably about just the about story the or yeah. in his writing in general. Uh, it's got deleted and alternate scenes, which I think are cool. And this is one that I think is interesting: the rare work print feature version. I'm curious to check hmm. that out. What exactly that huh. has or does not have in Weird. it? So I'd be curious. I wonder to check if that's that. like the original pre 
I don't, I don't theatrical know. Theatrical cut yeah, release. Yeah, some weird. Yeah, I think that'd be interesting. And then, of course, you know, the final disc is commentary by Ridley Scott and commentary by a bunch of other people who worked on the film. So I'm surprised there's nothing about um, Blade Runner 2 in there. No teaser or, you know, working on a sequel. Probably they're not far enough along. Yeah, they're, probably not, yeah they're probably not far enough along. But nevertheless, you know, it's pretty cool. It's the 30th anniversary. That's um, that's the other point. 30, What since when is 30 a relative uh, anniversary true, year? True, but you know, I mean, if <laughs> it was inevitable that they're going to get to a blue Ray bump at some point, yeah. so I'm Especially, glad. And since he had a movie come out this year, it was probably easier for him to just be like, "Hey, oh. while we're at it, why don't we bring my old stuff?" So, I mean, there's a, there are other editions coming out today, which are much more sort of pared down okay. compared to this. So, you know, this is the one that you want to get if you're going to get mm. Blade Runner. I'm just this saying, is, this and, is the 37 disc. It, you can for, ride, drive yeah, drive that, it home. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. But no, yeah, it's even got some little Android with it. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, I, I I I'm on board with it. You know, I think this is the good one to get until you know inevitably whatever the next turn or media it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take it for what it is. And I mean, I like Blade Runner. Don't think that yeah, I'm a good movie. Don't, don't, I mean, please do write me hate mail telling me how much Blade Runner is awesome because I would just love to troll you all. But I do like the movie. Yeah, so. he, he knows how to troll. So watch out. Anyway, you know, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, join us for our next episode when we talk about Tom Hanks in honor of Cloud Atlas. Yes. As always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, Roku, Miro, Blip. Check it and get glue. And we will see you next time. Can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the side style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.